Hey everybody, Dave Webster, Identity Crisis Design. Um, gonna do a voiceover here for the Toxic Mail Garbage Pail project I was working on. I've got two of these that are gonna be getting auctioned off at the Power Piston show at the end of March in uh, Cleveland. It's a hot rod show and uh, there's a bunch of pinstripe artists and custom painters that get together and donate their time and their art for a worthy cause uh this i believe at this show it is for a trade school uh we want to get more kids into uh, trade schools and uh that's what the uh you know that's what the charity's for so here i'm just weeding out a uh, paint mask that i have uh previously you know worked up in illustrator and i'm going to be making the label that goes on the front basically just a yellow warning label that says toxic mail and it, I want it to look nasty I want it to look old and weathered which is you know why I keep watching this and wondering why I'm obsessing over how straight this is because uh, it doesn't really have to be and it turns out <laughs> it turns out that it isn't uh, in, in the end anyways it looks good but it's supposed to look ugly and anyways ugly is good in this case uh, so there's some uh, transfer tape over the whole thing that's used for transferring vinyl. Uh, great masking uh, material as well. So I hit the uh, area with a little bit of a spray can primer so that I'm not competing with the patina underneath. Um, with, as when I'm painting the yellow, I, I don't want I want to achieve a good hide. I don't want to uh, see any of that underneath patina. And here, this is how you achieve a speckle effect. Uh, point your airbrush at a little stir stick, a corner of a business card. The paint collects on the end of the stick and then the air blows it off in these little speckles. It's great for doing sand, stars, um, any kind of granite. And then this uh, natural, uh, organic looking uh, uh, shield, just to give it a little bit more grunginess. I have another set um, that I really like. I'll put the link in the description from hamairstencils.com. That's the one right there. That nice plastic will last forever stencil. And then uh, we do uh, try to affix our label to the front of the can. It's a lot of fun going to this show. Um, I don't normally leave the state to do stuff like this but it was so much fun uh last year you got to meet so many great artists and a lot of guys that you haven't seen in a while and, and very often it's the only time you get to run into these people at, again and it's a great refresher and here i'm just um kind of again obsessing over where these wrinkles are um <clears throat> this is not considered like a professional vinyl application it's just a paint mask for something ugly and um time being of the essence i do want it to get it get it done fast but but yeah so i'm really looking forward to it um so i'm gonna block off the outside because i know there's places where the uh mask did not cover and uh, i want to make sure that my black is just on the letters and just on that biohazard symbol I've got some paint on it, a little, you know, not super thick, you know, just enough to hide. And so it'll be like one coat and then let it dry or hit it with the hair dryer and uh, hit it with another coat. Okay, and then the uh, the unveiling. I love taking the stuff off. I mean, it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt because there's like these little complicated shapes. And this is on my drawing table where my other camera is. So um, I'm in the other room, you'll notice the format of the video changes because on, on, on one end, I'm using my iPhone. Okay, so I just spritzed it with water and now I'm sanding off the uh, the paint to give it a... A, you know, bu nasty look, a nice, ugly, weathered patina look. 
and I'm trying to target it so that I take off just the black. Uh, I don't want to go through the uh, other layers underneath. I just want the ink to look like it's been uh, uh, rubbed off. So, um, but the uh, the drawing table is on an angle, so every time I let go of the bucket, it wants to roll off, and I hate readjusting it. But uh, that's why you see the two formats. In, in the one room, I've got the, I'm working with the camera on the other one, um, uh, the, you know, the camera's on the art table, or I'm working with the iPhone camera versus the art table camera. Yeah, but that is a wet 600, I think, if I didn't mention it already. And I sped this up because I know like these things take they take a while, and I'm trying to keep the video under 10 minutes. But and here is the rivet. It's a rivet strip. Um, this is a great uh, if if you're using a uh, vinyl cutter for uh, you know masking effects and things like that. It's a it's a great thing to keep around. Uh, you can use it for a bunch of different things. Um, I don't throw I don't throw any of my files out if I can help it. So you basically are constructing a, uh, you know, this is how these panels would be knitted or welded together. You know, I'm trying to get it to look not necessarily like a, um, something thick, like a Bessemer, you know, like, like something like that. And very industrial. It took all of this, you know, metal and steel to hold this, this toxic stuff in here. And here's me obsessing over stuff I don't need to obsess over again. Making sure I've got a clean edge on something that's not going to have a clean edge later. Right, so uh, you shade the one side. It doesn't take a lot. It doesn't have to be black. It just has to be, you know, darker. And then you uh, will highlight the other side. Uh, this is a natural mask, just a torn piece of cardboard. I want to give the uh, that label a little bit of uh, shadow underneath so that it kind of looks like it's lifting off of the can. Fold over some of these corners. But, um, you know, any any handheld stencil that you use, if you don't have a, a natural piece of cardboard torn, you know, it's great for doing mountains and land masses and things like that. Any Anything like... Uh, that you want to give a, an organic edge to. I think that one came from a case of pop or beer or whatever. You can see the cans, where the cans were sitting. So yeah, we uh, shade the one side and then I believe I go around the outside of this rivet strip so that I can find my edge. Um, it's basically there banded metal that's been uh it's all kind of puzzle pieced together you do the highlights on the other side and then uh, this is why we leave the the uh, actual dots and uh you'll see why i like to kind of put the masking tape on it like this because if you keep them all in the same spot you don't put them down one by one this goes would go a lot faster. You can uh, just like this. One of them always gets away anyhow, but. There. And then you highlight the opposite side and uh, highlight and shadow the uh, sides opposite of what you previously did on the, on the rivet holes. Yeah, just a little bit of it. It doesn't have to be super bright. Um, you wouldn't necessarily even need to use uh, white. It just happened to be what I grabbed. You could use a lighter, uh, like a lighter orange or something else. It's uh, kind of like rusty. And I think I put a, that very color, like a lighter orange as a bevel around these uh, rivet strips to give it some uh, dimension, a define, you know, which which ones are on top of other ones and underneath. And, and here's more of those uh, ham air stencils. 
It's got like nice paint spatter uh, motif. And then there's a lot of uh, black and candy. Um, I like to make it look like I'm dragging the um, uh, dragging the rust, the gravity, and the wetness, and the oxidation is um, is kind of like dripping down, and uh, and just kind of defining the edges there, with the rivet strips. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot that you could do with this. Um, on one, I think on uh, one I had done previously, I put a nice big black hole inside one. Well, not huge, but like big enough for something like an eyeball to be looking out from the inside that uh, something was alive in there or growing inside the uh, pail full of toxic ma mail. But I don't know. I just, I, I, I don't know. I don't remember like where the... Um, the idea came to me. Okay. So the first time I did one of these, I actually airbrushed the ooze and, um, <clears throat> it was just like, you know, one of those like V eight moments, like, why am I even doing that? I can just let, you know, gravity do the work and, um, you have to wait a long time, not a long time, but you know, I'll, I'll walk away from it at this point. And then, um, you know, a day later when it's dry, we'll put on the, uh, you'll see there's a glow, kind of i want it to look like it's a like a real nuclear nasty look and i was I'm working on two buckets at the same time by the way so if if you notice the, the drips going through one label are not the same as the drips going on or on one bucket it's different than the other bucket um i'm i'm doing two at the same time while i'm you know documenting documentizing <clears throat> but yeah so it looks you know radiated or radioactive and uh it's got like an energy coming off of it, but this is basically uh, this is basically it. Um, I think uh, I put on some pinstripe designs afterwards. Uh, the next time I do that, um, you know, just so that I could like rub them off again. I mean, it is a hot rod show. You want to put something in there that's you know relevant, um, you know, to the uh, to the event. So, but yeah, that's basically it. This is uh, this is the toxic male garbage pail a nice little uh, office decoration so uh thanks for watching guys like please like subscribe hit that bell for notifications and uh share this video with your pals i certainly am uh, happy that you showed up i hope you enjoyed yourself i want to get some more of these out soon and until the next time you guys take it easy